Should this be two videos? Because no one's going to want to click on a video that says reaction to this song and us talk about her tweet for 30 minutes. Uh, let's just make it two videos. Okay. So which one do we talk about first? Do we talk about the actual... I don't want to hear the song, so <laughs> let's okay. talk about the tweet. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Two Gay Mats. It's Matt Steele. It's Matt Palmer. And it's a day full of Taylor. More than yes. expected. Yes. I woke up this morning saying, Matt Palmer, Beautiful Ghost is premiering tonight at 9 o'clock in the PM, or 9.01, sorry. Uh, and we're going to react to it. And he was like, oh, God, shoot me now. <laughs> Not because I dislike Taylor. As we know, I love Taylor. I of love, course, love her. Of course, support her, as you will soon find out later in this video. But I do not support this cat's nonsense. So I'm nervous about this song, which sounded snoozy. I'm so excited about it, but okay. then all of a sudden this afternoon, I get a text from Matt Palmer saying, holy shit. Yes, because Taylor Swift, okay, she tweets out and Instagram stories out a long diatribe about Scooter Braun mm. and Scott Bruschetta, who obviously she's been feuding with ever since she left her old record label, Big Machine. She didn't have the rights to her masters, and so that was upsetting to her. She's telling yes. everyone, she's been very public about wanting the rights to her masters because she feels like, these are songs I wrote growing up. These are songs that came from me. Why does someone else own the recording? And when yeah. you know the song gets played on Spotify or gets used in something, the more of the money goes to um, Scott Bruschetta and uh, Scooter Braun, who is a nemesis of hers for a whole another Kanye West related yeah, reason. Yeah, I, I completely forget what did Scooter Braun do. Well, Scooter is. Um, I knew at one point and he's I Justin Bieber's manager. Yeah. He's also Kanye West's manager. And when Taylor was going through the whole Kim Kardashian Kanye West thing, he and Justin Bieber were somewhere cyberbullying her on his Instagram, and it was just a whole thing. Okay, she cool. feels like a lot of the Kanye stuff Scooter Braun had a hand in. Yes, and so Taylor Swift, she owns the actual songs, like the writing of the songs, she owns the, but not the recordings of the songs. Exactly. Since Taylor has made such a big deal about uh, wanting to own these masters and has made such a big deal about being at odds with her former, you know, record label head and Scooter Braun, they now realize they have the power to tell her, oh, you can't do this because we own the recordings of your songs and you're not allowed to make a new recording of this song until, like, November 2020. So if you want to... Uh, uh, perform a medley of your hits uh, at the American Music Awards where you're getting Arts of the Decade, we will count that as a new recording, meaning you're in violation of the agreement. That's insane. I know. That it's they such, count that as a new it's recording. It's such a fucking loophole that they're just using because they're mad that they've gotten all this bad press. So Taylor Swift, middle of the afternoon, tweets out with the caption, don't know what else to do. This is long, so I don't know how much of this I'm going to read. Got time. <laughs> oh my okay. god. It's been announced recently that the American Music Awards will be honoring me with the Artist of the Decade Award at this year's ceremony. I've been planning to perform a medley of my hits throughout the decade on this show. Scott Bruschetta and Scooter Braun have now said that I'm not allowed to perform my old songs on television because they claim that would be re-recording my music before I'm allowed to next year. Additionally, and this isn't the way I had planned on telling you this news, Netflix has created a documentary about my life for the past few years. Scott and Scooter have declined the use of my older music or performance footage for this project, even though there's no mention of either of them or Big Machine Records anywhere in the film. I will go on, we'll talk about this more, but the thing is, when people don't own their masters, like Rihanna didn't own her masters for a long time until she bought them back. Mm -hmm. But even when she left the label, the label's like, well, if she goes and performs these songs elsewhere, of course we're gonna let her do it because it'll be money in our pockets, mm -hmm. money in whoever wrote the song's pockets, everybody wins. This is them truly just being assholes because they're like, we've gotten so much bad press about this. Yeah. We wanna just like put up roadblocks in her life as much as possible just because we can and use our powers for evil, essentially. Which is a horrible idea for their part. If they wanna look as good as possible if they don't want to look bad like you're gonna do this thing that will hurt Taylor right like she's going to find a way to make you look even worse and like I, there's one thing Taylor Swift is good at it I mean, is winning ask <laughs> Camilla Bell have you heard her name since that song on speak now didn't think so like come on I know, it's bad. I will say I do have mixed feelings about this because the last time that Taylor came out and said, like, Scott, or, Scott Bruschetta and Scooter Braun bought my catalog, I didn't know anything about it, and, like, this is very upsetting to me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Scooter and his wife and his child got death threats, and, like, the thing is, Taylor's stands are crazy. 
please. <laughs> like, and I'm a Taylor fan myself. I'm a big fan, but we've all seen the comments under our reputation video. Like, they are serious. Yes. I realized she said I didn't know what else to do, but as the letter goes on, she goes on and basically calls on people to, I don't know if it's tweet at them directly or tweet at the artist that they manage. Yeah, or, how does she word it again? Because that was a part of the, the tweet that I was kind of like, Okay, ah. please let Scott Borchetta and Scooter Braun know how you feel about this. Scooter also manages several artists who I really believe care about uh, other artists and their work. Please ask them for help with this. I'm hoping that maybe they can talk some sense into the men who are exercising tyrannical control over someone who just wants to play the music she wrote. This is essentially in telling her fans to tweet at like Demi Lovato and Justin Bieber and yeah. Kanye West and bombard their social media to talk to their manager about Taylor Swift's fight. And it's oh, like, yeah, and I saw people sharing tweets of Taylor stands at, like tweeting at all of these people and being like, why haven't you said anything yet? Why haven't you said anything yet? And it's been like, it's been 30 minutes since this tweet came out. Some people aren't. People who just tweet off the top of their head yes. they want to create some sort of dignified response. And some people are busy and don't have the time to listen for whenever Taylor Swift drops a shady tweet. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure Justin Bieber has not heard of this yet. <laughs> That's why I have misgivings about it. It's like, of course she should be allowed to play her music. It is her music. These are her songs. She has built her life on these songs. Other people owning their, uh, you know, people's creative outputs and their, like, writing and songwriting is wrong, sure, but, like, to basically sick your whole entire like legion of millions of fans onto not only these people that who are directly affecting your career, but also the people that they manage outside of you. It's like, oh, this is a little, it gets a little sticky. Yeah, here, it's, you it's know? like, do you know, you know, you know the power you have. Oh, yes, she does. She could have had the tweet just add that, like, right. this is what's happening. I'm very upset about it, which would have given her so much good press. Like, right. oh no, poor Taylor. I agree. I feel like she could have left the in part out. Like she could have just said, okay, this stuff is happening and there are roadblocks in the way. I want to be putting this out. If I'm at the American Music Awards, I'm only singing songs from Lover, here's why. That would have made more sense to me. Beyonce has people coming for her every which way. She has people who said that she didn't have her first baby. She has people like Carrie Hilson who told her to sit down, go have some babies, retire. And like, of course, Beyonce has a lot of power. Those B stands are serious as well. Yes. She could go sick them on people and she never does. Oh, she it's has to say just like, You should talk about your rights and how you watch performing music and how people are holding you back from it, but to be like, go bother people until I get what I want, it's just like, yeah. oh, that part's a little... Because it's like, Taylor, you know your fans are going to do that anyway. Yes! <laughs> yes, just let them do what they do. It's like, well, I didn't tell them, yeah. but now it's like, well, you did kind of tell them. <laughs> yeah, now it's like, yeah, there's there's a, evidence, there's a paper trail there. Yes. I just wonder what's going to happen with it. It's so unfair because she has worked a, very hard for a very long time, and the fact that you know, she's being blocked from performing her music on any sort of recorded stage at this point is so upsetting and I'm sure it gets in the way of everything she wants to do because she's not touring for Lover in a major way because her mom is sick mm -hmm. and so she's like I can't be on a tour that's going to take up half my entire life for six months because I need to be available at a drop of a hat so I get that but so I'm sure she's like oh, I'll have this Netflix thing coming out I'll have this American Music Awards performance mm -hmm. I'll have all of these things coming up like to cement like my dominance in the past decade and the fact that people are putting roadblocks in her way of that is really, really shitty. It's really, yeah. especially for someone like Taylor, who's a planner, like much like myself, I'm sure she's thought this all out and been like, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. The thing is, it's such a freaking loophole for them to catch her in. It's like, mm -hmm. I feel like even if Jojo were to have sung one of her old songs when she was in that fight with her label on like a TV show or a talk show, like they weren't going to come for her for that. Like, yeah. this seems just so petty and so gross and like almost shooting yourself in the foot. Like people would have listened to that medley, gone to iTunes and bought her old music and Scott Borsetta and Scooter Braun would make money off it. Well, and Scott and Scooter gave her like an ultimatum. Basically like you can perform this and you can have the Netflix special if you like stop talking about us if you st and, <laughs> and, don't and don't re do another right. re-recording of all your songs. It's not really that her contract was that terrible. Most mm -hmm. people do not own their masters. I think yeah. the reason that it's become such a huge deal is because she made such a public statement about the two of them, and so now they're just feeling vindictive. Yeah, the thing that she was angry about was that it was Scooter Braun who yes. bought her. She was like, I would be fine if someone else bought the masters, but the fact that it's him is what right. upsets me. 
Uh, it's, it's just gross. It's I mean, so I guess gross. They do have a legal right to do it. Yes, but it's just like, do you really like but... you want to go down with the ship? Especially like Scooter Braun, sure. You've never worked with her. You just like know of her through your clients and like obviously through pop culture and you like say that you're a fan. Scott Bruschetta, you worked with her since she was 16. Yeah. Like for from the time she was 16 until she was about 30, you were the head of her record label. She has made you so much fucking money in your, your lifetime and like and you could do this? you could say the same in the other way around you could say well i made her money too but it's like at the end of the day it's her songs it's her talent like yeah you're the one who like put the contract out yes that, added, right you know? and it's and her fucking father do donated a million dollars to her record label at the beginning just to make her child a star and now she is but anyways <laughs> it reminds me <laughs> of when Mariah Carey was leaving Sony Records mm -hmm. and even at the end of her time with Sony Records, Tommy Mottola was just so fucking pissed because he felt so much ownership over her. He went out of his way to sabotage her career, told, you know, J-Lo's producers, like, make a song exactly like the song on Mariah Carey's Glitter and before it comes out, give it to J-Lo. He wouldn't let her record Where Are You Christmas, Christmas Classic by Faith Hill for the Grinch movie, which I'm still mad about and will always be mad about. Like, he just went out of his way to ruin her career just because because he was petty and vindictive and, uh, you know, being a child about it and just like kicking and screaming like, that's mine, that's mine. Well, it's just the fact that these sort of representatives feel like they own these artists. Right. It's just like so gross in general. Like, I know. Uh, to me, it's a giant, giant, giant red flag when an agent or a manager for actors mm. says like, oh, I discovered this person. Mm. I discovered it. It's like, no, you fucking didn't. <laughs> you didn't do shit. Right. You literally knew talent or good. Yeah. You knew good looks when you saw it. <laughs> Right. And you knew that they would make you money, so you had them sign the contract, right. and you were able to get them all, an audition for something. Right. Like you didn't discover shit. Right, you're get not a Spengali, sir. Like yes. you just you like didn't make the painting. No, you, you just, just knew money when right. you saw. Right, you them made money. a good investment, and great. Congratulations, of that's course. great for you. And but you like, managed them well. And you've done it for so long, like both in Mariah's case, ten years, and I think in both of their cases, ten years. You've had ten years of success with this artist. Why won't you let them go be free and fly? you know, away from you, yes. but they, their career should still go on much like yours can. It's like they, Taylor Swift's not going to say, hey, Scooter Braun, never sign another artist. Never sign a little blonde girl because yeah. you could be me one day. It's like, she can't do that and she wouldn't if she could. Yeah, so she don't care. <laughs> right. well, especially because like, she's still making them money. Yes. Like, so why would they do this to her? It'll just make people, it'll just make people want to get that re-recorded more. I know, more. I know. You're really just giving her more press and more, you know, because the thing is, people want to listen to Taylor Swift and what she has to say. No one really cares about Scott Bruschetta no. or Scooter Braun. I literally so. never heard the name Scott Bruschetta until today. <laughs> I mean, I'd heard his name, but of yes. You have, yes. <laughs> I mean, I have mixed feelings about it, but at the end of the day, this is wrong. Let her perform her songs. Let her celebrate the success she's had over the past decade. And like, why get in the way of this girl celebrating her, her success that you get to share in? Like, I just think it's so petty and gross. And people are always telling, talking about how women are so petty and getting all these squabbles. And this is the pettiest shit. White male executives are as petty as they come. So don't come telling me. People who wish they had Taylor Swift's talent. Uh, hey, yo, hey, yo. Tell us how you feel below. Do you feel like Taylor Swift handled this correctly? Should she have chosen to stick her stands on the two of them? Do you feel like what they're doing is wrong? I assume so. But if you don't, I'd love to hear your point of view because I, I would have never heard that. <laughs> but if you're like Team Scott Bruschetta or Team Scooter Braun, I'd love to hear from you as well. Um, make sure to let's do our podcast, which mm -hmm. you can find on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Just search for 2K Mats, T-W-O. Uh, if you love our videos, go to patreon.com slash 2K Mats. And for as little as $1 video, you get an extra bonus video from us every single week. Uh, we're going to be reviewing, which one is it? Bye Bye Birdie? Guys and Dolls. Whatever. Some... Bye Bye Birdie's coming though, bitch. Get ready. Ooh, okay, we're reviewing some old musicals I won't care about. <laughs> and uh, I think we have about 50 bonus videos at this point, just so people oh, know. Oh, it's probably up to 50. So people, like, like, if you want bonus videos from us, if you're like, oh, I miss you guys this week, go to our Patreon, you'll get more. Yeah, and Speak um, Now is one of them. So yes. And, we did... like Taylor Swift, and, and if you love talk about our speak magnum now. opus, Speak Now, I will fight you. Yes. <laughs> go, go watch that. Yeah, um, Adam Parnell says, become a patron. Yes, he does. And he also says, follow us on Twitter at 2 Gay Mats. Or at it's Matt Steele. Or at it's or Matt Palmer Music. And um, I guess that's it. Do you have anything else to tell them? Uh, we'll be back with a, a beautiful ghost review. Yes. And if you don't want to watch that, we'll be back soon with another brand new Do Get Mad. You want to watch it. The people want to watch it. People want to hear a review about the song in the movie of the millennium. I hope it surprises me and it's good. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back soon with another brand new Two Game Mad. Bye. Bye.